Welcome back to XP, I'm Cameron, and this video is gonna teach you how to use the wiggle expression the right way. I've also included a bonus tip, so watch right until the end if you wanna catch that. So most wiggle expression tutorials will go something like this. Create a new composition, let's call it wiggle comp, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second, duration of 15 is fine. Click OK. Now we have our composition. Let's go up to our lips tool and create a little circle. Okay, and let's call this circle. Very original. Okay, so what we do from there, is we hit P to open up our position properties. Click uh, and hold Alt while clicking on your position keyframe and you'll open up your expression dialog or input box. And then you can just pop in your wiggle expression. So wiggle, open brackets. Now you have two parameters to work with. The first one being the frequency. Uh, so that'll affect how fast your wiggle is going to happen. And then you have your amplitude. And this refers to the amount of pixels that your wiggle can move within. So just to give you an example, if we put in five for our frequency and 100 for our amplitude, Go to the end, drop in a semicolon, click out, you'll see what has, what has happened. It's basically animating this circle, it's wiggling the position, and this is what happens. So you can obviously come in here and you can, you can change these, make it faster. You can see what the frequency does, you can make it much, much slower, put it at one maybe. You can see what what happens when you play around with these these numbers. So I can obviously make this higher as well. And you can add this to any transform property you want. So if we wanted to add it to rotation, we could. The opacity. We can come in, right click on our position, separate dimensions, and add our wiggle to a single dimension. And if we wanted to add it to scale, we could. I don't know why you'd want to though. There actually are ways to constrain these proportions if that's what you wanted to do. You could even add the expression to every single property. I don't know why the f you'd want to do that. You can even try something a little different. So uh, if I created a rectangle, drop in a CC bend it. You can see we can even add it to an effect. And yeah, now you know how to apply the expression to anything you want. Literally anything you can add a keyframe to, you can add an expression to. And that's all good and well, but what have we actually made? A bloated erratic fly? A strobe light warning? What's this one? A hopped up jelly cube? This is just a cry for help. I don't even want to say what this one looks like. Enough. This is not the way the wiggle expression is meant to be used. So I'm going to teach you how to use it properly, including how to control it in the context of an actual animation. The fact of the matter is that sometimes all you need to create is that erratic fly, and that's fine. But what I think wiggle should be used for? Anticipation. Remember your principles of animation? Probably not. So firstly, here's a definition. Anticipation in animation is using an action to preempt or prepare the viewer for another action. So what does that mean? Let's look at an example. So here we have a simple animation, just a cube moving from the left to the right with some position and rotation animation. So let's add some anticipation to this. So if I come slightly back, drop in uh, the same keyframes, and then if I come to my initial keyframe, add some rotational animation in the opposite direction of the following rotation and do the same with the position. So I'm going to pull it further back. Just going to make sure that this is easing correctly. So you can see what that does. That extra bit of work, that extra bit of animation adds so much life and so much character to our cube. And that's the power of anticipation. So let's actually bring this back to our wiggle expression. As promised, we're now going to look at the wiggle expression in context of an actual animation. So here's an animation I created. The 
Okay, so what I want to do is at this point in the animation when uh, there's a lot of action, a lot of drama, I want to add the wiggle expression to the character's head and to the balls inside of his head uh, to really sell this part of the animation, to really add a lot of force, to anticipate it basically. So I could come in and I could add the wiggle expression to all these different position properties for every individual ball. But that would create wiggle at this point in the animation and at this point in the animation. All in places where I don't want the balls inside his head to be wiggling. So how do we do this? How do we control the wiggle expression? Well, I'm going to show you. Um, and I've actually created a short tutorial on this exact topic which you can uh, see is linked on the top right of this video. So you can have a look at that as well. But obviously I'm, I'm also gonna go over it now. So the first thing that we need to do is go up to Layer, New, Null Object. I'm gonna hit Control X to cut that Null Object. I'm gonna come down to my bold layers, hit Control V to just paste it above. I'm gonna give this layer a name. I'm gonna call it Wiggle Master because that sounds dope. And the way that we control a wiggle expression is using an effect called a slider. So if I click on my wiggle master, come up to effect, come up to expression controls, come up to slider, drop in a slider, we now have this animatable property. I'm gonna call this freak or frequency, then I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna call this amount and that's for the amplitude in our wiggle expression. What we can do next is click on our wiggle expression, hit this little lock button on this panel and that'll keep that information there when I click on my balls layer. Then I will alt click on position, my balls layer, and I'm gonna type in freak, for frequency of course, equals. Then I'm gonna grab this little tool here which is called the pick whip and I'm gonna click and drag that up to this frequency slider. And when I let go of the mouse click, you can see it just adds this code which links uh, this slider um, in this expression. So if I drop in my semicolon, hit enter, type in amount equals, do the same with my amount slider, drop in our semicolon. I can now add in the wiggle expression. So if I type in wiggle, now instead of typing in numbers here, I'm actually going to link uh, to my two sliders. So for the frequency, I'm just gonna type freak, comma, amount. And again, drop in my semicolon, and if I click out, well of course nothing's gonna happen at this point because our frequency and amount sliders are both set to zero. So if I change this, Let's make our frequency something like 10, and our amount is gonna be five. You can see this particular ball, it's right over there, if you can't see it, is now wiggling. But of course, it's, it's still wiggling here as well, and we don't want that. Uh, so we'll get into how to fix that. But for now, what we can do, which is great, is right click on this position, copy expression only, and I can copy that to all of my other ball layers just by hitting Control V. And now they have the exact same expression applied. There you can see it. Then if I change these, you can see it, it automatically updates for every single ball. Uh, and that's really the beauty of setting up your wiggle expression in this way, because you have all this control. And with these sliders, you can actually animate the sliders. So if I drop in a keyframe on the slider, um, you can see it's at five now. Um, if I take it to the point just before uh, the balls kind of explode into that next scene, I need to keep this at five. But then just as they snap, I'm gonna take that down to zero. And I'm actually gonna take this initial keyframe down to zero. Just add some easy ease to that. Now you can see none of the balls are wiggling at the start. 
but as soon as we want them to, they start wiggling and then they stop when we want them to as well. And I mean, is, is that not powerful? Is that not the kind of control that you want with your wiggle expression? I think so. Now I'm just going to copy this expression again, add it to my head rotation with control V again. And because this expression is linked to the wiggle master null, it's also going to only animate at this point. Voila, absolute magic. You can see how much uh, energy this adds to the animation by comparing the two. So obviously this is with the wiggle, without the wiggle. And you can see it, it, it doesn't have nearly the kind of emphasis, the oomph that you're seeing with the wiggle. And there you have it, how to use the wiggle expression the right way. Project files are linked below. Please like and subscribe if you liked and feel like subscribing. As promised, here is your bonus tip. And that's gonna be turning the wiggle master into an animation preset so that you can reuse it very easily. So if you haven't created animation presets before, stay tuned because this is gonna be really interesting and useful. What I wanna do is again, copy this expression on the position of one of these ball layers. I'm actually gonna hit P on my wiggle master and add the wiggle expression to the wiggle master. And then if I just click down on all of these, I'm gonna click on the frequency and click on the amount. And if I hold down shift, it will uh, retain these. Then if I click on control, it'll add position to my selection. Now, if I come up to animation, save animation preset, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that this is in the right folder, but for me on Windows, that's in my documents, Adobe, After Effects, whatever you're using, and then use the presets. Uh, and then I'm gonna call this Wiggle Master. You can see I already have a Wiggle Master because I've saved this before. I'm just gonna call it Wiggle Master V2. Save that. Now this is really great because if you click on your animation presets, user presets, you can see we have this here. Um, and in order to use that, it's very simple. So let's create a, a comp here called wiggle test. And let's drop in, let's drop in a nice little polygon. Okay, so we have a little polygon. I'm not going to name these because I want this to be quick, but uh, don't follow my example. This is very bad form. Don't want you guys creating bad habits because you see me doing that. This is not normally acceptable. Now if I click on layer and new null object, drop in my Wiggle Master V2. The first thing I need to do for this to work is rename this Wiggle Master because the expression is actually looking for a layer called Wiggle Master. And now if I hit P, you can see the reason why we added the expression to the position of the Wiggle Master because now I could just right click on this, go copy expression, and uh, hit control V on all of these layers, you can see they have an animated wiggle and you see how it re retains the animation we had on our wiggle master. So you could even set this up beforehand um, to have the expression turn on and turn off. So you could have it come from zero to five and then from five all the way down to zero and and you could save it like this, and this would already be there as soon as you uh, drop in your Wiggle Master. I thought I'd just share that with you because it's very useful and you can do this with a lot of things. So animation presets in After Effects are really something to look into.